Hello viewers, I am Manoranjan Burman and welcome to my YouTube channel Medical Lab Tech. Today we are going to discuss about reticulocyte count. The reticulocytes are known as the juvenile or young red blood cells. They do not have nucleus. Like RBC, RBC, mature RBC also they do not have nucleus. But the main difference is the reticulocyte contains ribosomal RNA in their cytoplasm. But normal RBC do not contain. Why ribosomal RNA is important in the reticulocyte? Because in the reticulocyte step, still the hemoglobin synthesis occurs because of this ribosomal RNA. So after production, reticulocyte production is there in the bone marrow. So after production of the reticulocyte in the bone marrow, the reticulocyte will spend one to two days in the bone marrow. Then it will come out into the circulation and it will be there for one to two days in the peripheral blood and it will go and reach the spleen for its maturation. Once it will mature in the spleen, so it will become biconcave matured RBC and come out into the circulation, blood circulation. The reticulocytes in the peripheral blood can be distinguished from the matured red blood cells by slightly basophilic hue in the cytoplasm. That means reticulocytes will have the RNA, RNA fragment. That RNA fragment will give a blue color. That is the basophilic hue, which the normal RBC do not have. So we can count the reticulocyte in the laboratory by using supravital staining. The supravital stain will give blue or purple color precipitate into the granules or the filaments of the reticulocyte. The supravital stain, we can name some supravital stain like new methylene blue, brilliant cresyl blue. It's coming to the next. So this is a comparison between two stains of peripheral blood. Peripheral blood film stained with Lesmen stain, this one, and peripheral blood stained with supravital stain. So these are the RBC, red blood cells. These are the red blood cells, the round, round one, this one, this one, this one. And another side, this one is the RBC with the supravital stain. This one is the RBC, this one is the RBC. Can you guess which one is the reticulocyte? Yeah, it's mentioned here, this one. How we can distinguish a normal mature red blood cell from reticulocyte? Because the reticulocyte will have this blue basophilic hue. That means some filamentous like structure you can see in the reticulocyte. So this is the main difference between the red blood cell and the reticulocyte. And one more difference is there the reticulocyte is slightly larger than the mature. RBC. Next, coming to the next point. The purpose. Why we are going to perform reticulocyte count? So it is one of the baseline studies in the anemia. If the cause is not obvious, hmm? no obvious cause. So to next is to diagnose anemia due to ineffective erythropoiesis or due to decrease production of red cells. So to diagnose anemia in ineffective erythropoiesis, before before talking about ineffective erythropoiesis, I would like to tell you about erythropoiesis. Erythropoiesis is the production, the process of production of red blood cells. So ineffective means the production of RBC, there is some defect. So in a simple sense, we can say like destruction of developing erythroid cells in the bone marrow. RBC is produced in the bone marrow. So it is the, there is some defect in the production of RBC in the bone marrow. As a result, there will be less numbers of red blood cells produced. So another increase erythropoiesis is associated with increased reticulocyte count. So if there is increased erythropoiesis, more numbers of red blood cells are produced in the bone marrow. As a result, the reticulocyte numbers will also increase. So increased reticulocyte count can be seen in increased erythropoiesis. So we can say like reticulocyte count is used to differentiate hypoproliferative anemia from hyperproliferative anemia. 
So what is hypoproliferative anemia and what is hyperproliferative anemia? Let's talk about hypoproliferative anemia. Hypoproliferative anemia, anemia means production of an inadequate number of erythrocytes to maintain the homeostasis. So the, no, no, the bone marrow is producing red blood cells but the bone marrow is not able to produce sufficient number of red blood cells to maintain the red blood cells in the circulation that is hypoproliferative circulation. You can see this hypoproliferative anem anemia like aplastic anemia, pure red cell aplasia will come under this category. And what is hyperproliferative anemia? Hyperproliferative. Hyper means increase. Increase in the production of the RBC. As a result, there will be a high reticulocyte count. The reticulocyte count may be as high as even 1 lakh also in some cases. So, under this hyperproliferative anemia, the hemolytic anemia or increased blood loss will come. So next, response to specific therapy in iron deficiency and megaloblastic anemia. The another one is the follow up the course of bone marrow transplantation for enlargement, engraftment. So if there is a person have undergone some bone marrow transplantation, so after that they need to do the reticulocyte count. Next, talking about clinical significance. So, reticulocyte count is increased in hemorrhage. Hemorrhage means after bleeding, after severe bleeding, reticulocyte count will be increased. After hemolysis, hemolysis means breakdown of RBC. If RBC is breakdown, there is hemolysis, then reticulocyte will be increased. Hemoglobinopathies like sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia is a type of anemia where the shape of the RBC will become sickle instead of biconcave. So decreased counts are seen in ineffective erythropoiesis. We have already talked about ineffective erythropoiesis. Aplastic anemia. Aplastic anemia is a type of anemia where there is some defect in the bone marrow. Leukemia means blood cancer. Alcohol. Alcoholism. Now talking about the normal values. So infant, if you talk about the values of reticulocyte in percentage 2 to 6 percent for infant for adult and children 0 0.5 to 2.5 percent and if we talk about absolute reticulocyte count the value is 25,000 to 75,000 per microliter or per cubic millimeter so now talking about the specimen which type of specimen we need we need blood but the blood should be anticoagulated blood the EDTA, K3 EDTA can be used or heparinized capillary blood can be used. But fasting is not necessary. And after collection, the test has to perform within 2 to 3 hours. The principle of the test. So we are going to use new methylene blue, the supravital stain and blood. So we need to mix both the both blood and new methylene blue have to mix. So once we'll mix and incubate, the new methylene blue will give color to the RNA fragment in the reticulocytes. The RNA fragment we have, I have showed you in the previous slide. So, new methylene blue will give color to the RNA fragment, blue or purple colored. So, after incubation period, we will take the mixture of blood and stain and will make a smear and will allow it to dry once after it is air dried we can observe it under microscope and we will count down the reticulocytes along with the RBC and the reticulocyte is expressed in percentage of red cell. Here one important thing I can tell you is supravital staining. The new metal in blue is known as supravital staining. Supravital staining means we are staining some living cell rather than some dead cell. In Lesman stain, what do we do? We make smear from the blood, we'll fix it, the cells are died, then we'll stain with Lesman. So, but in this case, the new metal in blue is staining the living cells, living reticulocytes, not the dead one. 
Then staining solution, how will you prepare the solution? You need brilliant crystal blue or new material blue, 1 gram. 3% trisodium citrate saline solution, 100 ml. How will you prepare this 3% trisodium citrate? You need to take 3 gram of trisodium citrate and dissolve it into 100 ml of normal saline. That will make 3% trisodium citrate. So after uh, mixing, filter it filter it after properly mixing and dissolving. So after that, after filtering, keep in a dark bottle. The requirements what you need, the grease-free glass light, test tube, pastry pipette, capillary tube, test tube rack, microscope, the reagent, that means the staining, new material in blue or brilliant gracile blue. Procedure, how will you start? So, First, you need to take two to three drops of stain, the new methylene blue, the filtered one, in a dark bottle. Then add same volume of blood into the tube. Mix well, mix properly. Then incubate it at 37 degree for 15 to 20 minutes or 30 minutes. So after incubation, you need to take out the test tube. You need to resuspend the cell by gently mixing it. So after mixing, take a drop, here's a picture, take a drop of the mixture on a slide and take another slide as a cover slip, make an appropriate angle and push forward like uh, how you used to prepare a peripheral blood film when you were going to stain with lace mints. Then the same procedure. But here instead of blood, you are going to use the mixture of blood and supravital stain. So after preparation of the smear, let the smear air dry. Once it is air dried, you can observe under microscope using oil immersion objective, the 100x1. So after that, you focus it. You need to count down the reticulocytes present. So when you are counting the reticulocytes, if the reticulocyte count is below 10%, it is you have to count all the successive fields to at least get 100, uh, 100 reticulocytes. You have to count 100 reticulocytes until you get 100 reticulocytes. If the reticulocyte count is below 10%. And it's very important. Whenever the reticulocyte population is low, you need to increase your survey, increase your field. You need to increase the survey of your field so another another way you can do is you can count the total red cells in at least 10 field to determine the average number of red cells per field so suppose this is this is one field so this field we found three reticulocytes we have to note down three reticulocytes along with the rbc's present one two three four five six like this you have to record this red blood cells also so you, you can you have to count more than 10 or you can count at least 10 field 12 field or 15 field and you need to keep the record of it so now now coming to the last part the calculation so after you have observed under the microscope changing the fields while while choosing your field you should be very clear about that the cell distribution clear about the cell distribution you need to count in a area in an area where the cell distribution is even so after that calculation whatever count you have found number of reticulocytes in n field suppose you have counted 10 field that means number of reticulocytes count in 10 field if you have counted in 15 fields it will depend upon you how many fields you have counted so that is x average number of red cells per field that is y suppose you have counted 15 fields so average field which which number will be there so that you have to put it here total number of red cells in n field that is n into y that will make the total number of rbc against the reticulocyte so now coming to the final calculation reticulocyte percentage reticulocyte percentage is equal to 
number of reticulocytes count in n field divided by total number of red cells in n field that is x divided by n into y into 100% because we are going to express the reticulocyte count as percentage so that's why we need to multiply with 100 so from this reticulocyte percentage you can count the you can uh, calculate the absolute reticulocyte also so how will you calculate absolute reticulocyte is very easy once you have the reticulocyte percentage you use reticulocyte percentage into rbc number of rbc with the same blood this is how you can count the absolute reticulocyte count thank you for watching and see you in an another video bye